so the next topic in third module is frequency shift keying okay and one of the university question asked is explain the generation and coherent detection of bfsk system it is asked for 6 marks from june july 2019 okay so in this video we will see the signal space representation and the generation and the detection of your fsk signal so so you know that the FSK means the frequency of the carrier is varied, right? So it is a frequency modulation scheme in which the digital information is transmitted through discrete frequency changes of a carrier signal, okay? And it is one of the nonlinear method of modulation. So in this case, B FSK means B FSK M is a message signal is either 0 or 1. So your M is equal to 2 in this case. So the symbols 1 and 0 are distinguished from each other by transmitting one of the two sinusoidal waves that differ in frequency by a fixed amount. So in general, you can we can represent uh, the signal S i of t is equal to root of 2 e b into t b into cos 2 pi f i t. So in the case of b f s k, your i will take the value 1 comma 2. Okay, so 0 to t b and 0 elsewhere. So where i is equal to 1 comma 2. Now, uh, what is your EB? EB is equal to transmitted signal energy per bit and FI is equal to NC plus 1 divided by TB for some fixed integer N and I is equal to what is the value? 1 comma 2. Okay, so let us consider symbol 1 means it is taken as S1 of T and symbol 0 is taken as S2 of T. So I can uh, reconfigure this as S of T is equal to S1 of T which is equal to root 2 EB by TB cos pi F1 of T and what will be for the second case f2 of t for symbol 0 so this is going to be for symbol 1 and this is going to be for symbol 0 okay so it is also a continuous phase signal okay the frequency only is varied so these are the two generalized representations okay now uh, from the signal you can we can detect that by means of gram schmidt's uh, orthogonalization principle you know we have to find out the orthonormal basis function right so here there are two different frequency components f1 and f2 so how many orthonormal basis function will be there there will be two orthonormal basis function so in general phi i of t can be given as root 2 by tb into cos 2 pi f i t right what will be your i value 1 comma 2 so 0 to tb so you can uh, deduce that there are two orthonormal basis function phi 1 of t and phi 2 of t what will be your phi 1 of t root 2 e by tb into cos 2 pi f1 t and phi 2 of t will be equal to root 2 by tb into cos 2 pi f2 t so you can uh, write what will be your uh, s of t i can reconfigure in terms of your orthonormal basis function as you know that what is your phi 1 of t is equal to s1 of t divided by uh, root uh, eb right root eb so uh, uh, what will be your s1 of t s1 of t is equal to root eb into phi 1 of t for symbol 1 and s2 of t will be equal to root eb into phi 2 of t for symbol 0. Now what about your coefficients sij sij where i is equal to 1 comma 2 and j is equal to so this stands for m and here n right 1 comma 2. So what will be your sij 0 to tb s i of t into phi j of t into dt. When you substitute both the values, what will be your value root 2 eb into tb cos 2 pi ft into root. After simplification, in general, you can write sij si is equal to root eb for if the value i is equal to j and 0 for i not equal to j. Okay. So, this is your value of your coefficient. Okay. Now, how, uh, how will you represent your signal space diagram? You know the number of orthonormal basis function. So, n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 2. So, there is a small difference between your BPSK and BFSK, right? So, in that case, you had only one orthonormal basis function. So, based on this, the two message points, you can fix it as S1 is equal to root EB and 0, where S2 is equal to 0 and root EB. So, uh, how will you plot your uh, two dimension? n is equal to 2, right? So, you have phi 1 and phi 2. Now, in, the, uh, in this case, you will be having message point 1 will be equal to uh, root eb right root eb and uh, y is 0 whereas your message point 2 will be equal to 0 and root eb okay so that is how you have got message point 1 here and this is message point 2 
okay so uh, what uh, this is your perpendicular bisector uh, which uh, signifies your decision boundary so this region is going to be your z1 and this is going to be your z2 z1 means for your which lies in the message point nearer to the message point 1 and region z2 which is lies uh, nearer to the message point 2 okay so this will be your signal space representation now moving on to your uh, second uh, parameter that is your transmitter okay so in the case of transmitter you will be having your block diagram is given by binary uh, data sequence uh, will be given to your on off uh, level encoder where the output of the encoder is going to be your root eb for one symbol one and zero for symbol zero okay so the output of the encoder will be given to your multiplier where your signal will be multiplied by your orthonormal basis function so here you will be having m of t and here it will be your inverted signal so this is your for your uh, symbol 1 and this is for your symbol 0 okay here it is 2 pi f 1 of t and here it is f 2 of t okay and uh, the addition of both the signal will be giving your transmitted signal or your modulated signal that is your s of t what is uh, happening in the case of uh, detection x of t so what will be your x of t x of t will be equal to s of t plus through the channel you will be having noise right so w of t that is what designated as x of t x of t will be given to uh, this will be your correlator right so correlator by saying this itself you can understand that it is synchronized with the transmitter because you have a multiplier along with that of your integrator okay the output here is x1 to observation this is your x2 it is similar to that of your previous uh, different systems now here the difference is here you will be having your output is taken as y which is nothing but the subtraction x x1 minus x2 okay plus and minus so uh, y uh, the subtracted signal x1 minus x2 that is y will be given to your zero threshold device decision device if y is greater than zero the uh, it will be in favor of symbol one and if y is less than zero it will be in favor of symbol zero okay so this is just the explanation of your transmitter and the receiver bfsk transmitter it the in, it consists of mainly two parts one is your on off level encoder and the second one is your pair of oscillator as we have seen in the diagram okay so on off level encoder the output is root eb in response to the input symbol one and output is zero in response to the uh, symbol zero now what is a pair of oscillators you so in the pair of oscillators f1 and f2 differ by an integer multiple of the bit rate 1 by tb and the lower oscillator with f2 is preceded by an inverter as seen in the diagram right for input symbol 1 which will work upper oscillator with f1 is on and s1 of t is transmitted where in this case you will be having the second will be off that is a lower oscillator will be in the off condition whereas when symbol 0 is transmitted lower oscillator with f2 will be on and s2 of t will be translate uh, transmitted whereas in this case what will be off your f1 uh, will be in the off condition okay now the oscillators are synchronized with each other you know that so uh, in um, uh, an alternate method which can be used is a voltage controlled oscillator can also be used now in the receiver it consists of two correlators with common input correlator outputs are subtracted the output is y y will be equal to x1 minus x2 now y is compared with a threshold of 0 if y is greater than 0 symbol 1 will be transmitted y is less than 0 symbol 0 will be transmitted okay so these are the explanation uh, description between your signal space representation transmitter and the receiver in the next video we will see the probability of error of your bfsk and uh, the notes will be available in my telegram channel 